this channel, I'll be talking about whatever I fucking want. So, the sister who I'm gonna call Mary, who defended his brother, who I'm gonna call Michael, in order to keep their identity sealed, has made another TikTok video to thank everyone for the overwhelming support they received, as well as calling out the white racist and the white trolls who tried to undermine her story about her brother over a city bike. And by the way, to all those who undermine and diminish his sister's story by saying that his brother's a thug or his, his brother's a bee or saying that it's Sarah Jane Connery's bike shows that, that you barely listen to all the videos I've explained in this situation. So instead of making yourselves look dumb in my comment section like you did in my last three videos, please watch the entire video until the outro of the video ends before commenting. First off, I want to say thank you to everyone who's offering their support, everyone who's in the comments fighting the trolls and the racists tirelessly. Um, I'm very, very grateful for all of you guys' support. Um, and I just want to say thank you so, 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 so much. This has been a nightmare of a situation. Um, and I'm just glad that people are in support of my brother because he is only 17 years old. And, you know, um, so thank you to all you guys that are showing your support. Um, and that I also want to say to the trolls and the racists, um, the mental gymnastics that you guys are displaying is probably the best that I've ever seen. Um, you get a 10 out of 10 from the judges and I, and I'm really impressed with how you're making full use of the gymnasium that is your mind. Um, and there's some information I didn't explain in the initial video. So here's my follow-up video with more information. Um, pertaining to why my brother docked the bikes, why they didn't leave. Brother's a bike angel. Um, so first, city bike naturally encourages riders to ride in intervals. 26 cents a minute, but he has a $5 a month city bike subscription and he's able to ride for six cents a minute and his first 45 minutes for a ride are free. The 37 cents you see in the first receipt is because he went over that time. But usually he rides and docks and rides and docks. Docking your city bike restarts your time. He rides bike number 5603915 home at 7.59 p.m. A couple of minutes, maybe 20 minutes after the interaction had happened. And there's people saying, oh, he's squatting on a bike. Resetting his bike to ride it again to where he came from. This is the receipt that I included in the other video. Um, I just had to crop it so that the date can show up. Here's the issue, because it seems to be getting lost on some of y'all. Sarah Jane Carmen wanted the bike so bad, she violated my brother's personal space, then proceeds to cry and scream for help in the middle of Manhattan in a group of black boys. Knowingly, knowing what that would look like, knowing that she's not in danger, knowing that she doesn't need help. There were other bikes at the rack. Why didn't she go get a different bike? My brother's not a thief. My brother's not a thug. My brother's 17 years old. He's actually preparing for graduation and prom and to go to college. So imagine having those three major life events for a teenager coming up and you have to deal with all of these things. They recorded that incident out of safety because they were scared for their lives. Imagine if a police officer or a, or a self-appointed vigilante would have walked by and saw that situation. What would they have done? What would have happened to them? And she wanted to get her way by any means necessary, even if that meant potentially endangering the life of a minor. That's the point. 
That's the issue. That's the point. She scanned the QR code by violating his personal space. By violating him in general. Because he said no and she did it anyway. He's affected by this. This is not just a social media thing. There's real people behind this. There's a real person whose life is affected. Like I said before, this is why black people had enough of these privileged white persons to cry wolf every single time. She touched his hand that was on the handlebar, and she snatched his phone out of his hand. Thus, she violated his personal space. She faked her tears, and she faked being hurt. Once again, her disgusting behavior cannot be ignored. Sarah's fetus wasn't hurting. She was being sarcastic and y'all and y'all got played. These types of Karen's do this all the time. It's fucking obvious to see that. And Karen's like Sarah do this for shock value. Every time things don't go the white woman's way, a white woman would weaponize their own tears to start fake crying and pretend to get hurt by a black person. When, as a matter of fact, a black person who's just minding his or her own business would never do anything to hurt someone, especially if that someone like Sarah Jane Comrie was being annoying. And in case anyone was wondering, the description of her of his sister's video reads we did file a police report to i want to subpoena the footage around the city bikes to prove that they didn't leave and come back and that sarah jane jane comrie didn't bat, walk up to him to ask him for the bikes Three, she grabbed his phone out of his hand. Assault, period. Exactly what I said earlier, multiple times. Four, please explain why she'd ask him for the bike if she believed she could just take it. Yes, exactly. Why, Sarah Jane Comrie, would you ask for the bike if you could just steal it from somebody who's already holding on the handlebars for a reason. Bottom line, if you support a racist white woman, then you're a racist white person. If you support a racist white woman who does their fake crying bit to trick you like Sarah Jane Connery did so that someone can gain sympathy points, you're a racist white person. If you hate black people who are always framed as bad people by a racist white person who always mischaracterized them by calling a black person a thug or a thief. You're a racist white person.